Those who dance are considered insane by those who can't hear the music. Putin has misjudged Ukraine, deeply so. What was supposed to be a lightning strike amputating the Ukrainian government has turned into a lengthy siege. Russian tactical planning is lacking in morale, logistics and communications. Ukrainians are fighting back. They don't want to be part of the Russian backyard. Meanwhile, America and Europe are imposing severe costs on Moscow. So much so that Russia has surpassed Iran as the most sanctioned nation with a record-breaking 5,532 sanctions in total. Even in the information war, Russia is performing poorly. Every conflict is a battle for public opinion and Russian credibility is faltering. No one is buying Moscow's justification for war. From the Baltics to the Caucasus to Central Asia, Russia's neighbors feel uneasy, ceaselessly pondering who is next on the Kremlin's hit list. All of these factors affect Russian policymaking. It's clear as day, by invading Ukraine, Putin has made the biggest strategic blunder of his life. Even if the Russian army were to win every battle and take every city, Russia would still lose the war. It wouldn't be able to secure Ukraine at large. Winning the hearts and minds of the populace would be an impossible task. And for as long as Ukrainians stand tall, Russia is headed to strategic defeat. Today's video is sponsored by Ground News. Keeping up with events in Ukraine can be difficult at times. Some stories are inconsistent or confusing. Recently, President Biden announced that he was sending more anti-aircraft, anti-armor weapons and drones to Ukraine. The package is worth about $800 million and it includes Switchblade 300 loitering missiles. That's a big deal. These drones can harm Russian logistics further still. But what's interesting is how this news was covered. Using Ground News' bias distribution tool, I can see that 78 news outlets reported on this story. But while left-leaning outlets made up 44%, only 14% of the news outlets were right-leaning. That's a staggering difference. And clearly, it's a story that is a blind spot for people on the right. Polarization of news can eventually lead to different political outcomes. So knowing how the news is made is just as important as the news itself. And Ground News has a host of useful tools that help me break down stories. If you're looking for a better way to stay informed about current events around the world, check out Ground News by visiting ground.news slash Caspian to download the free app. Vanity is a mortgage that is deducted from the value of a person. In his two decades of power, Putin has crafted for himself an image of a strongman, someone who calculates his every move. Be that as it may, Putin may not be able to win the war in Ukraine on favorable terms. If military operations continue to stall, Russia could find itself stuck in a costly, senseless occupation of Ukraine. Such an occupation would drain Russian resources while bringing nothing of value in return. And even though the Russian army could gain control over southern and eastern Ukraine, subduing western Ukraine will be considerably more difficult. The western portion of the country has much more forest cover, which will prove useful for Ukrainian insurgency forces operating in that particular area. It would be a situation similar to the Ukrainian partisan conflict during World War II when Ukrainian guerrilla fighters took shelter in the dense forests of western Ukraine and coordinated hit-and-run attacks. In a revival of such an insurgency, each destroyed Russian tank would encourage Ukrainian insurgents to resist, while each Ukrainian killed would deepen resentment towards Russians. Resentment, hate, loathing and disgust are ugly emotions but powerful nonetheless. 
Hate can move nations, mobilize entire societies, and like nourishment, it can sustain the Ukrainian insurgency for generations. Backed by the West, that Ukrainian insurgency would be heavily armed and well financed. And for as long as it operates, it would drain on the morale of Russian troops and possibly drive the Russian economy into poverty. History is packed with instances where ragtag militias ousted superior occupational armies from power. For example, in the 1950s and 1960s, Algerian guerrilla fighters found ways to break the superior French army and sap away at the political will in Paris. Likewise, even if Russia were to gain tactical gains on the ground, it would still face strategic defeat. The fundamental truth is that it is easier to conquer a country than to hold on to it. The Russians wouldn't gain what they sought out to achieve, which is a stable buffer separating the Russian heartland from the competition in NATO. The unintended consequences of the war, consequences such as sanctions and insurgents, would be exhausting for the Russians since they went into this war with wildly different expectations. By its own design, Russia would involuntarily enter into a proxy conflict playing out right before its front yard. Now, Putin has always been a gambler, and a reckless one at that. In 2019, the editors of the Financial Times newspaper asked him if his appetite for risk-taking had increased or decreased with each passing year. Putin responded by citing a Russian phrase. Putin took considerable risks in Georgia, Syria, Crimea and Donbass, forcing Western policymakers to accommodate, cooperate and negotiate with him. And while those risks paid off, his Ukraine gamble is already showing signs of blowback. One of the most perplexing shortcomings is that there seems to be no political plan for the day after. What happens after taking Kiev is unknown. The Kremlin could muster a secret police to subdue the Ukrainian population. It could also stage an election and put in power a pro-Russian government body in Kiev. Call it Vichy Ukraine, but the authority of that body would be questioned by foreigners and Ukrainians alike. Much like the American lack of political planning in Iraq and Afghanistan, Russia would enroll in an unwinnable occupation. Instead of a stable buffer space that the Russians wanted, Ukraine would turn into a highly volatile conflict zone that could also spill over into Russian territory. The ultimate result would be the opposite of what the Russians set out to achieve. What's more, a quagmire in Ukraine wouldn't be something the Russians could walk away from, since it wouldn't be some faraway overseas operation, but a large neighboring state. The Ukrainian public would likely reject Russian occupation as much as they would reject puppet rule in Kiev, and no amount of repression would change the hearts and minds of Ukrainians. Going by this, Russia has already failed in its chief objective. It wouldn't be able to hold on to Ukraine in the long term. Now, admittedly, the new puppet government in Kiev with the aid of Moscow, would have more success in eastern and southern Ukraine. But Putin wouldn't be able to turn Ukraine into a submissive state like Belarus. The Russian occupation and subjugation of Ukraine could never work in practice owing to Ukraine's territorial size and the population's recent memory. So while in the past Putin rejected Ukrainian nationhood, calling it an artificial state, a creation of Lenin, he cannot undo Ukrainian identity. That genie is out of the bottle. As much as the Russian leadership wants, they will not be able to assimilate Ukrainians into the Russian identity. No amount of repression can change that. In fact, by kicking the hornet's nest, 
the Russian occupation is actually strengthening the Ukrainian perception of nationhood, bringing it much needed unity. The sense of shared communal experience is strong, always has been. Nations, after all, are born on the battlefield and forged by stories. With each passing day, new stories are added to the Ukrainian chronicles. Think of the president who refused to flee the capital, the soldiers from Snake Island, the ghost of Kiev, or the woman who told Russian soldiers to put seeds in their pockets so sunflowers will grow when they die. Some of these tales are not entirely accurate, but that matters little. These are the stories that nations are built from, and it's a force that is nearly impossible to combat. Meanwhile, on a global level, the sanctions imposed on Russia would split the country from the globalized economy. Capital flight will become a daily reality, foreign investment will dwindle, technology transfers will cease, and innovative firms will look to leave the country. Even hydrocarbon markets could close businesses in Russia, which would make it nearly impossible to reform and modernize the Russian economy. China could become an invaluable ally for the Russians, but China cannot carry the weight of the entire Russian economy. That is just not going to happen. So even if somehow Moscow manages to subdue Kiev, Russia itself could fall into ruin in the process. A key variable in the fallout will be the Russian public and its perception of political leadership. In the past, Assertive military policies proved popular at the polls. The Syrian intervention and the Crimean annexation performed well for Putin's approval ratings. However, Ukraine is close to home. It holds an entirely different meaning for Russians. There are millions of mixed Russian-Ukrainian households, and the two nations share deep-running cultural ties. Eventually, information about the war in Ukraine will spill over into Russia proper. And as much as the Russian propaganda machine will try to conceal, twist or disprove things, the Kremlin's rationale for war will steadily become weaker over time. In the age of mass media imagery, the Kremlin cannot exclusively rely on suppression at home to twist the narrative and keep its public content. Steadily but surely, Russia's war in Ukraine will turn into a strategic defeat affecting Russian power within and without. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. By thinking that there is something dangerous to be avoided, the Ukraine war has manifested into something dangerous to avoid. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. If you found this video useful, leave a like, subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive further notifications. Thank you for watching and so all.